Welcome to Electron Line. Our next problem is kind of interesting. We have uh, two sources of light. One appears to be a little brighter than the other. The power of the source is S1 and S2. The distance between the sources is D. And we're trying to find the point between the two sources where there is the minimum amount of light received from the two sources combined. We need to keep in mind that the intensity of the amount of light at any, point in, at any point in space, depending upon the source of the light, is equal to the power of the light divided by the distance from that light squared. So we'll have to need, we'll, we're going to need that equation to solve this problem. So where would the point be? And let's call that distance x away from the source on the left here. And of course, if this is d between the two, then d minus x is a distance from the other source. So step two is determining what's being maximized or minimized. In this case, we're trying to minimize the amount of light received between the two sources. So two says minimize light. And we're going to indicate that with the letter I for the intensity of the light. So the light received from both sources is going to be the sum of the two sources. So the light received. So the equation for that would be I is equal to the intensity received from the first source plus the intensity received from the second source. So in this case, that would be the power of the first source, S1, divided by the distance squared, which is x squared, plus the power of the source of the second light, S2, divided by the distance squared, which would be d minus x quantity squared. Now notice that the equation for the intensity for the amount of light received at any point between the two sources is only a function of one variable x. d is a constant, s1 is a constant, s2 is a constant, so we don't need a constraint in this case to try and eliminate one of the variables, which means we can go ahead to step number five, or in this case step number six, and take the derivative of that and set it equal to zero. So step number six, we take i prime is equal to, so here we have s1 times x to the negative 2. Let me rewrite the equation like this, makes it easier. So we have s1 x to the negative 2 power plus s2 and the quantity d minus x to the negative 2 power and then we can easily take the derivative of that so it becomes minus 2 s1 x to the minus 3 power and then minus 2 s2 times d minus x to the negative 3 power times the derivative of what's inside, which is a minus 1. And so simplifying that, we have the first derivative of the intensity of the light is minus 2 s1 x cubed, and this minus times this minus makes this a plus 2 s2 times d minus x to the minus 3 power. And now we're able to set that equal to zero and solve for the unknown variable x. And that would be minus 3 power, can't forget the minus. And so we have set i prime equal to zero. And when we do that, let's go over here. So that would be step number uh, seven, because we're going to solve for x. And so we have zero is equal to minus 2s1 divided by x cubed plus 2s2 divided by the quantity d minus x quantity cubed. Since we're solving for x, let's separate these two because that way we get rid of the negative here. And we can divide both sides by 2 as well, which means we get s1 divided by x cubed is equal to s2 divided by the quantity d minus x cube. To solve for x and having those cubes there, that makes it difficult, but what if we take the cube root of both sides of the equation? All right, when we do that, we get the following. We get the cube root of s1 divided by x is equal to the cube root of s2 divided by d minus x. And now we're ready to solve this equation for x. That makes it a lot easier. First, we cross multiply. So we end up with uh, d minus x times the cube root of s1 is equal to x times the cube root of s2. 
Now we want to isolate x, so we can move this to the other side. So we end up with d times the cube root of s1 is equal to, that makes it x times the cube root of s1 plus x times the cube root of s2. And now we can see that we can factor out an x and we can move everything else to the other side. So we end up with x is equal to, we're going to have d times the cube root of s1 divided by what we have left here, which is the cube root of s1 plus the cube root of s2. And now we have found an equation that tells us where, relative to the left side, relative to the bright source here, where we're going to have the point of the least light. Kind of an interesting problem. Of course, that doesn't mean much to us until we have some numbers, which we don't have. But if you take a look at it, notice that if S1 is larger than S2, this fraction will be greater than 1 half. If S1 is smaller than S2, this fraction will be smaller than 1 half. So you'll get a relative position depending upon the cube root of the intensity of the two sources. So again, in summary, we wanted to minimize the light, the point of where the light has a minimum intensity between the two sources. So we're going to add up the intensity of both sources at any arbitrary point, a distance x away from the left side. So that's going to be s divided by x squared from the left side and s2 divided by d minus x squared on the right side. We then take the derivative, set it equal to zero. The trick here is to cube both sides of the equation. That allows us to isolate x. And that's how it's done.